Questions you should be able to answer by the end of this video. Number one, what are four ways the periodic table is organized? Number two, what are characteristics of metals and where can I find them on the periodic table? Number three, what are characteristics of nonmetals and where can I find them on the periodic table? And finally, number four, what are characteristics of metalloids and where can I find them on the periodic table? The periodic table is amazing and is organized in several different ways. One of these ways is increasing atomic number from the top left to the bottom right. Just like reading a book, the atomic number increases. Another way the periodic table is organized is by groups. These are the vertical columns and each element in a group has similar properties. A third way the periodic table is organized is by periods. Periods are the horizontal rows and each element in a period has the same number of electron shells. A fourth way the periodic table is organized is by metals, metalloids, and nonmetals. This is something you learned in sixth grade, but I wanted to take a minute and review this knowledge with you. Each group shares similar physical or chemical characteristics that can be broken into four categories. The first is luster. This is a substance's ability to reflect light. We usually say it is a metallic or shiny luster or a non-metallic or dull luster. The second characteristic is malleability which is how well you can hammer flat or bend the substance without breaking it. Next is ductility, which is the substance's ability to be pulled into wires. And finally, conductivity, which is how well a substance can conduct electricity. Metals are the most abundant type of element found on the periodic table and start on the far left side. The characteristics of metals are that their luster is shiny, they are malleable, which means they can bend without breaking, they are ductile, which means they can be stretched into thin wires, and they are good conductors, which means if you put an electrical current at one end of a metal, it will flow through to the other end and shock you. This is why we use metals to carry our electricity through our nation to light your home and power all your devices. Of course, it would be very dangerous to just have metals out in the open like that, so we need to wrap them in nonmetals. Nonmetal characteristics are the opposite of metal characteristics and are fittingly found on the opposite side of the periodic table. Nonmetals are found on the far right side of the periodic table, and their characteristics are as follows Nonmetals have a dull luster. They are brittle, which means they can break when you try to bend them, and they are bad conductors. Another way to say they are bad conductors is to say that they are good insulators. This means that they do not allow electricity to flow through them, so we can use them to protect ourselves and the environment from a dangerous shock. The last group I need to review is the metalloids group. They are found on the stair step a little to the right of the center on the periodic table. These elements share both characteristics of metals and nonmetals. So when you are defining these, make sure that they have at least one metal characteristic and one nonmetal characteristic. These elements are often used in electronics for their unique abilities. That wraps it up for our review. I hope this helped jog your memory from sixth grade science.